This morning our special guest is from the UNM Cancer Center. Uh, we'd like to welcome to our, uh, our set today uh, Dr. Angela Wattinger Ness, Thank you. who is Associate Director for Education, Training and Mentoring at the UNM Cancer Center, also a professor of pathology at uh, the UNM Cancer Center. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank and you for having me. I, yeah. I did my homework on, on what you do, <laughs> and I felt like I was back in biology class in school. Uh, uh, Dr. Wadiger Ness is uh, one of the internationally recognized experts in in a well. I don't even know what to call it. It's it's a complex cellular switching system that's called G GTPase. Right. 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 That's and, exactly right. Okay. And. I know you have to explain this to us lay people, but what is that? <laughs> so these are proteins. Lots uh -huh. of people know about proteins because they drink them in their protein shakes. Mm -hmm. But proteins is what makes your cells work. And GTPases are one type of protein. They act like switches. And they turn on circuits in the cell and turn them back off and help the cell carry out lots of different things. So we study them because we're interested in disease and then understanding targets. And some of those targets are the GTPases and then bringing it all the way around to therapeutics. So we're trying to use GTPases as new targets for drugs in various diseases. So using pro so that, so the how does that mm -hmm. relate to the protein? So oftentimes in cancer, for example, proteins are targeted by drugs mm -hmm. specifically. Um, one that you probably know about is things that cause pain. Those are cyclooxygenase enzymes, mm. just like DTPases are enzymes. Mm. And so we take over-the-counter medicine to tone those down. Right. So that's the same idea. Okay. So the GTPases are, it's like a sequence of switches, right? Mm -hmm. One does another that does another that right. does another. If I, That's it's correct. kind of a chain. Right, exactly okay. right. So I did do my homework. <laughs> I, I, I think it's fascinating. Can you see these in the microscope? Is this observable or does um, it just a. Uh, yes, you can. So the way we do it in a microscope, we have laser scanning microscopes, mm -hmm. and those are capable of looking at subcellular detail. So mm -hmm. looking at things, My goodness. you know, if this is the size of your cell and the protein is a pinpoint in the cell, then you can see it. But we used to have to use tricks. We have to use other um, reagents to see them, and, and then we light them up with a fluorescent probe. It's kind of like those you know, necklaces that uh -huh. you wear that light up in the dark. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. So that's what it looks like. And you see these little spots wherever the protein is. Interesting. So we hear that you were selected as a research ambassador to Germany. That's correct. Oh, tell us what that's about. So as a representative of the German Academic Exchange Service, mm -hmm. I am responsible for meeting with students and faculty and students at all levels from undergraduate to graduate and describing some of the research opportunities in Germany. These are funded by the German Academic Research Exchange Program and they cover everything from science. I'm kind of the science ambassador uh -huh. in, yeah, in the STEM fields, but it can cover everything to history, to language arts, to all kinds of topics that yeah. students might be interested in. They can go for a summer or a whole year. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and they can even get their degree <laughs> abroad. Wow, get a degree in Germany. <laughs> that'd, be, kind of that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of the programs, I mean, you don't have to be afraid if you don't know the language. Sure. You can either learn it yeah. through programs or you can, there are programs that, are degree programs in English, mm -hmm. international programs, yeah. Wow. So mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity for students in New Mexico who are interested in expanding their horizons, spending some time abroad, and meeting new people and having new experiences. Uh, looking over your background, it, it, it appears that you enjoy talking to young women about opportunities in science and technology, that mm -hmm. you, you like the mentoring role. I do. I've had lots of women and um, minority students in my laboratory and help them to, you know, sometimes students really aren't sure if they like science mm -hmm. or they want to go into a career in medicine. Mm -hmm. And so having an opportunity to come to my lab and meet with my folks really helps them to decide. 
yeah. where they want to go. That's a great opportunity because I know there's, it seems like it's been, there hasn't been as much interest as there should be mm -hmm. for young women to get into those types of fields. Mm -hmm. So I think the more of that there is in the world, that's great. So. Especially engineering and the physical sciences, yeah. I think, are really un underrepresented for women. And it's important to have role models, mm -hmm. I think. And Agreed. there you are. You're a role model. Yeah. <laughs> um, Angela, let me ask you again. I'm going to go back to the biology sure. of all this because I think it's interesting. So as you study the sequence of these switching proteins, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, there's, uh, in my reading on this, there's some proteins that we don't really know what they do yet right in the sequence mm -hmm. and so we're trying to unlock that secret right now is that it right and, and then tie all this uh, as it relates to cancer how, okay. how does that work? sure can so one of the s groups of gtps's that we're working <laughs> on in the context of cancer control the cytoskeleton of the cell and that's just like our skeleton the bones in our mm -hmm. body it gives the cells rigidity and structure and it, but it's more dynamic than our cytoskel than our skeleton in that it breaks down and reorganizes, and it helps the cells to move and crawl around and to shake hands with their neighbors, and all of that's really important for our body tissue organization. Right. That's a healthy right tissue. in a healthy right. situation. Right. So what happens in cancer is that these GTBases are there's too many of them, or they're super hyper activated so uh, they're supercharged yeah. and they're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time yeah. bottom see. line and so what we're trying to do is target them with drugs <laughs> that can turn them down and like turn the volume down a little turn bit turn the volume yeah. down that's I exactly see. right get them and, to calm down and do and what they're supposed to do the way that's important in cancer is that a lot of the properties that we think about like when a cancer moves, metastasizes, mm -hmm. then the cells have to hold on to the surface that they're contacting and then they have to invade. And so these GTBases are, are helping them do that. And so mm -hmm. if we can turn them off, then maybe we can stop that process in its tracks. And how has it been going so far? Do you see kind of a, a light at the end of the tunnel as far as that actually happening pretty soon or a few mm -hmm. years? So we're pretty excited, actually. We have a clinical trial ongoing uh -huh. in ovarian cancer mm -hmm. where we have what's called repurposed a drug. So it is FDA approved for a different indication. Okay. And so we are able to give that drug to patients immediately because it's already approved for human use. And so we're trying it out in patients who agree to, to have it mm -hmm. and seeing if that might help reduce the spread of the ovarian tumor because hmm. ovarian wow. cancer is a very devastating disease. What are your expectations out of this clinical trial? What do you think will happen? So this is, clinical trials have different stages. Right. This is like a phase zero or phase one in which really patients are receiving standard of care. Mm -hmm. The drug they're receiving is really given mostly for pain management, but we've identified this other activity against GTPases in this drug. And so we're expecting to find whether the drug reaches the site, which for ovarian cancer would be the peritoneal cavity. Mm -hmm. And then we're expecting to see if it has any impact on the tumor cells. So, wow. <laughs> this is uh, amazing work that goes on at the uh, UNM Cancer Center, and, and every time we have one of the faculty or a representative on, it's just, you, yeah. you guys are working on some incredible things, and you must look around the cancer center and go, "This is this is remarkable stuff." Yeah. Well, yeah. the UNM Cancer Center is pretty amazing, yeah. as you it know. Is. It um, is. Y'all are doing amazing things. I really over there. enjoyed <laughs> meeting you, and uh, congratulations on your work. Congratulations on your designation with Germany, and uh, thanks for coming down to the Morning Group. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. <laughs>